Now, another debate creating plenty of buzz online today is the claim that young people may be forced to change their real-life names to cover up an online past. Google's chief executive, Eric Schmidt, is warning that so much of teenage life is now documented on sites like Facebook that it could affect people's lives and careers when they get older. Well, well, people are uploading an enormous amount of their private lives, what they do, who they know, what they've gone to see, and they're putting it out on these social networking sites, even embarrassing photos, stories about nights out. And it's very easy for employers who can access these things to see what you're doing, and they can use it against you. They can build up a picture of you without meeting you, and that's a very dangerous position to be in. I, I really don't think young people are aware of what they're doing. And the, the simple issue is that people haven't explained to them how important privacy is and that the internet is not a private place. It's a public domain and once you put it out there, it's very difficult to get it back. Well, are they right? Joining us, social media expert Joshua March and video blogger Miles Dyer is with me here in the studio. Talk to you in a second, Miles. Let's go to Joshua first. Do you share Eric Schmidt's concerns that there's simply too much about you and me going on sites like Facebook? Uh, no, the opposite, actually. Um, in fact, the evidence shows that young people are becoming more and more savvy about privacy controls uh, on places like Facebook, and they're quickly learning how to control their own identity. Uh, and more and more, uh, Facebook is being used as an identity provider around the web so that uh, whatever their actions they take anywhere is being connected to their real identity, and they're learning to use privacy controls in order to c control who can see, uh, who can see their content and, and they're learning to be able to turn that off when they want to. And I actually think that if Google is going to have to learn to start respecting those privacy controls, and if they don't, it's going to be them who are going to be uh, in trouble later on, not you, the kids. Well, are you suggesting they don't at the moment? Um, at the moment, it's just the whole ecosystem is, uh, is still quite young, and the privacy controls are, are you know, growing in their usage and growing in their usage around the web. And I think over the next uh, five to ten years, uh, Google is going to have to work closely with the social platforms to make sure that they integrate the same kind of privacy controls and I mean, respect when users turn, you know, turn things off. There's a, there's a, look, a bit of looking over the electronic fence of envy at uh, Facebook from Google's point of view, isn't it? I mean, there's all sorts of rumours they might be trying again to build their own social network. But look, they know a hell of a lot about us. If you use Gmail or anything else, uh, they've no doubt had a look at all the words involved in every email you've ever written. Absolutely, and they do use that for their advertising targeting. I mean, I'm a big fan of Google as a company, but uh, they haven't cracked the social space, and I think they, they rightly are very worried about the future. And uh, this sounds a bit like a, a, a fearful remark um, in that users and you know, human beings are never going to start changing their names to make Google happy. Uh, and it's, and <laughs> well, Google is the one who's going to be fair. To I don't them. think he was arguing that. But let's no. talk about Miles Dyer here. Um, great site, Miles, and you just you literally tell the world about you and about your life. Correct. And you're not ashamed of that at all? No, I mean, I think in life there's always discretion. And, you know, I don't just tell everything. I mean, if I'm talking about personal things in my life, if it involves other people, then I'll use discretion. If, when you're out and about with people, you be careful what you say because you may offend someone with something you're going to say. And uh, I just think that with what Google have been saying, it's just kind of stating the obvious. I mean, if we look back when the internet was first getting big with these social networks, the issue was be careful who you meet because they're all paedophiles, for example. And the truth is it's not the case. That's one extreme. And they kind of build it up from there to normality. And it's the same in this case. Um, of course, there are examples in which people are ruthless and do give out their address and that. And there are consequences. But if you just... I suppose that one of the arguments that... Um Eric Schmidt is tapping into is the sort of permanency of it. And there's an assumption here that all our stuff will stay online forever. Now, that may or may not be the of case. Course. But here's the thing you see, your um, photos from when you had your 16th birthday party or stuff, a generation ago, would nobody would ever see them again. Right. They're in your mum and dad's house, and that's it. Isn't yes. It? Now, all that stuff and every th prank you ever pulled at university when you were drunk is now exposed for the whole world to see. It wouldn't be me drunk, but <laughs> yeah, I know, on well, a general right. basis. Um, but I, I think the point is. Um, videos are a window snapshot in time, yeah. um, which is the same as ph photographs, but the difference is with videos, people are watching a real person in the present. So four years ago, I've done videos where I express a particular opinion or philosophy about life, um, and people watching that four-year-old video will think that's what I think now. And I just think it's like anything in life. You would change the details on your Facebook page, you know, when things change, where you live, mm. the, the area in which you live. Um, but in terms of my videos, if there's something I don't agree with, I just do a new video and update it, and you delete the old thing. And if people are going to take it out of context, that's for people's discretion to use when they're viewing it, because if I've said something four years ago, 
look at the original source. I've still got my channel on YouTube. If people want to see what I've presently said, they can yeah. question me about it. Uh, Check it out that's, then. That's Joshua, it is. isn't there a point about this, a defence which sort of says, look, that was then, this is now. And enlightened employers aren't really going to worry about a photo of some hijinks taken ten years ago. Absolutely, and I think right now there's probably a fear from potentially some of the older generation who aren't yet on these platforms, but as more and more of people of all ages become on these platforms and become more savvy and, and are used to Facebook, and you know, the, the employers in 10 years are going to be the people who, who now are posting those, those photos. Yes. Um, and so it's, I think it's going to become more socially normal uh, and acceptable to have you know, embarrassing things in the past that people know so about. So final thought to both of you, there are companies now offering to wipe your existence off the web by going through it, trawling it, and trying to delete you. Would you ever buy into that, Joshua? No, never. No? And no, would you? No, I wouldn't. You I wouldn't would. see any need to? You, you got to? I think you stay true to yourself, you know? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and you take it all That's from it. beginning to end. That's it. Good That's to it. talk to you, gentlemen. Thank you both Thanks. very much indeed. Now, then the stories you've been searching for on the website today.